This is Mr. Anderson for Kellogg Community College, and we're going to be looking today at our second half of the video for the first session of trigonometry. We're going to talk first of all about some trigonomic relationships. Uh, the trigonometric relationship uh, uh, between sine, cone, sine, and tangent is really a triangle relationship, um, and one of the common ways to know your sine, cosine, tangent relationships is with the um, SOHCAHTOA method. Um, SOHCAHTOA is a way of remembering what is the triangle relationship between sine, cosine, and tangent. And it all has to deal with how you see that from an angle on a triangle. So if you have a triangle, and we're going to have the angle here at theta, um, so theta is in this corner right there. The relationship in that triangle of sine of theta is going to be the opposite side over the hypotenuse. Now the reason why I put the hypotenuse as 1 is because this is going to be what we're going to have on our unit circle. And our opposite side is going to be our y distance. So so of Sokotoa is sine opposite hypotenuse. So our sine is going to be opposite over hypotenuse, which means in our unit circle our sine is going to be y, because y divided by 1 is just y. Cosine is going to be adjacent over hypotenuse, and our adjacent side is the x, the adjacent side to theta is x over the hypotenuse. So the cosine is, again, I'll just write this down as the fraction, adjacent over hypotenuse. And since the cosine is x over 1, cosine of theta from that triangle there is x. Tangent is opposite over adjacent. So from that triangle there, I'll write down first of all, tangent is opposite, OPP, over adjacent, ADJ. And that would be y over x. So there it is, y divided by x. Now cosecant is the inverse function of sine. So if I take the reciprocal of our sine, it's going to be hypotenuse over opposite. And we can do the same thing looking at cosecant and y. It's just going to be 1 over y. Secant is the reciprocal of cosine. Therefore, it's hypotenuse over adjacent. And from this triangle, or from the idea of looking at these, this would be 1 over x, because it's our hypotenuse over adjacent, hypotenuse over opposite. Cotangent is the inverse of tangent, or 1 over tan. I'll just uh, keep it like that, which means that it's my adjacent over opposite side from theta. So that means this is going to be x over y. Now what this allows me to do with the chart down below, this allows me to fill this in. Alright, so let's back this up. There's a little cutoff at the bottom there. Uh, let's do a new color here. Alright, so to review from the video from the little spot up above, the sine of theta is y, cosine of theta is x, tangent is y over x, cosecant is 1 over y, secant is 1 over x, and cotangent is x over y. Now, degree-wise, we're going to go 0 degrees, 30, 45, 60, and 90 degrees. In terms of radians, this would be uh, 0 radians or 2 pi radians, depending if you want to look at the 0 degrees or take one revolution, go to 2 pi there. I'll leave that blank because it's 0 radians from 0 degrees. This is going to be pi over 6 and pi over 4. This is from the previous video. Pi over 3 and then pi over 2. So 
from the unit circle, if we look from the y, we're going to start off with the height of 0, and then it's going to go 1 over 2, then square root of 2 over 2, square root of 3 over 2, and then back to 1. Now, this is going to be the whole thing backwards here, so we're going to start off with 1 on the x, square root of 3 over 2, square root of 2 over 2, 1 half, and 0. So these are um, you know, you can kind of read this forward and backwards. 0, 1, 2, 3, 1 if you look at the numerators. 1, 3, 2, 1, 0 looking at the numer numerators here. Now when you look at y over x, you just take your y, put it on the numerator. 1, 0 divided by 1 is 0. And down here, 1 divided by 0 is undefined. Um, now if we want to take a look at this though, y over x. So 1 half divided by square root of 3 over 2. Dividing fractions, please don't cry, just skip, flip, and multiply. So we skip the first fraction, flip the second fraction on its head, and multiply them together. Um, these 2's divide to make 1, so we have 1 over square root of 3, but we can't leave a radical in the denominator, so what we're going to do is take that square root of 3, multiply the top and bottom by square root of 3, so 1 times square root of 3 is square root of 3, square root of 3 times square root of 3 is square root of 9, so this makes square root of 3 over 3. So there's your answer for the tangent of 30 degrees, or pi over 6. Now, dividing these two here is pretty easy. Square root of 2 over 2 divided by square root of 2 over 2 is 1. Anything divided by itself is 1. Again, we'll do another square root of 3 over 2 divided by 1 half, so skip, flip, multiply here. So we have square root of 3 over 2, skip that one, flip the second fraction, 2 over 1. These cross simplify, 2 divided by 2 is 1, so we have square root of 3 over 1, which we would write as square root of 3. So there's my answer for the tangent of 60 degrees. Okay, so now we're going to look at flipping the... Uh, sine, because this is the cosecant, 0 flipped on its head is 0 over 1 flipped on its head is undefined, because this problem is 0 over 1, this would be 1 over 0, undefined. 1 half flipped on its head is 2, square root of 2 over 2 flipped on its head, let's take a look at that, so square root of 2, if we flip-flop that, because this is the inverse, 1 over y, so we're going to have 2 on the numerator, square root of 2 on the denominator, Multiply top and bottom by square root of 2 over square root of 2. It's multiplying by 1, so we get rid of the radical in the denominator. This gives me in the numerator square root of 2 over 2 divided by square root of 4. 2 divided by square root of 4 is 1, so my answer is square root of 2. So that's what my reciprocal of square root of 2 over 2 is, just square root of 2 once you simplify it. This is going to be a little weirder because what we're going to have to do is take the square root of 3 over 2 and flip it on its head, multiply top and bottom by square root of 3 over square root of 3. This gives me 2 square roots of 3 over 9, square roots of 9, sorry. And then that way, if I simplify the denominator, this would give me 2 square roots of 3 over 3. So there's my cosecant of 60 degrees. Now, flipping 1 on its head would just be 1, looking at that. Now, we're going to flip 1 over x. Now, here's the cool thing. Notice that this is going to be kind of this whole chart backwards. So 1, and then this is going to be, you know, reading from the bottom up here, 2 square root of 3 over 3, square root of 2. Ugh, sorry about that. <laughs> it didn't look too good. And this is going to be then 2, because it's 1 half flipped on its head. And then this is going to be undefined. Which is kind of nice, because you'll notice that your sine and cosine tables are backwards of each other, and your cosecant and secant tables are backwards of each other. Now the cotangent table is going to be kind of a large crisscross with tangent. Um, if you flip um, this on its head, so we're looking at the tangent column now, just flipping it on its head, this is going to be undefined. Uh, square root of 3 over 3 flipped on its head is um, uh, going to be... Let's see, we're just gonna look we're gonna look at it this way here. We're gonna go three over square roots of three, and then we're gonna multiply top and bottom by square root of three over square root of three, and then that gives me three square roots of three over square root of nine, and that gives me three square roots of three over three, and then blam that simplifies to square root of three. Or you'll notice that it's again it's this chart kind of backwards here. Notice how undefined, undefined, square root of 3, square root of 3. This will be 1. 
This will be square root of 3 over 3, following the same pattern here. And then this will be 0. So again, let's go and use some color here to kind of show what I'm talking about. So let's follow this down and this up. See how there's some synergy there? Let's change color again here. Let's go to, which, let's see this one here. So you go this down, follow this up. And then finally, the last one, the last piece of symmetry here, follow this down, follow this up. Neat little, uh, neat little pattern saver, isn't it? Okay, so now we're going to go to the final page here, and we're going to look at some unit circle approach to the fundamental trigonometry, trigonometry identities. And um, to get this straight here, the first thing we're going to do is give you the definition of a circle. A circle um, with radius r, all right, so there's radius r, is defined of um, two dimensions, and those dimensions are dimensions of y and x. And if you go around the circle with this, uh, with by making right triangles here, um, you'll get the answer of x squared plus y squared is equal to the radius squared. Um, this is true for all um, all circles because they're built on right triangles, and we're kind of leaning on our Pythagorean theorem here for this. Um, and since we have the unit circle, the unit circle we know the radius, and the radius is going to be one. So one squared is one. Now, from the previous page, we learned that the x value is created by cosine. So instead of using x, we're going to have cosine of theta. And instead of, since we learned that the sine of theta is y, then we have here the sine of theta squared is equal to 1. And here we have our fundamental trigonometry identity, which is usually written as uh, sine squared theta plus cosine squared theta, using this as the commutative property, um, is equal to 1. Now what's kind of neat about this is that we can actually derive two other properties from sine squared plus cosine squared equals 1. And we can use that using simple division. So what we will do here is start off with our first function here, which is um, sine squared theta plus cosine squared theta equals 1. Now again, this is from the unit circle here. So one of the cool tricks is that what we're going to do is we're going to take this and we are going to divide, um, this is a uh, proper algebraic statement, we're going to divide uh, everything by um, cosine squared theta. Cosine squared theta and cosine squared theta. This is like multiplying everything by 1 over cosine squared theta, or another way of thinking about it. Let's do some simplification of this. So let's uh, go back here, change back to blue. Sine over cosine is actually tangent. So there's tangent squared theta. And then what we have is cosine squared divided by cosine squared, which is 1. And then 1 over cosine is secant squared theta. So what we've just derived is we've derived this trig identity that is actually um, an alternate to the original, but very useful for us as we look on to future chapters in trigonometry. Finally, what we're going to have here is we're going to take our original sine and cosine squared sums that equal to 1. And what we are going to do is we are going to, instead of divide by cosine, let's divide by sine squared theta. So here's sine squared theta, divide by sine squared theta, sine squared theta. Now, this is going to make 1. I actually probably should change that back to the other color. This is going to be equal to 1. And because anything divided by itself, it's 1. And cosine squared theta over sine squared theta is cotangent. It's our uh, x over y, which makes our cotangent. And then this is going to be cosecant squared theta, because 1 over it's the inverse of sine.
Now, what's great about this is that these are the fundamental trigonometric, trigonometric identities, and you can derive them just by starting with the unit circle and then quickly dividing by either cosine or sine to get these. So if you need to know them for the test, you can just build them your own based on that little premise. And uh, this ends our first little crash course into the unit circle for session one of trigonometry. Thanks for watching.